Hello, my fellow pedantic paleontologists. I'm Mr. Church. Today we're going to be building here in south of Nougat, in the dried up river bed, they call it, I guess. And we're going to be building on top of this brontosaurus. Why wouldn't we be building on top of a brontosaurus? Is, I think, the question you should be asking yourselves. And uh, so this is a free item that you get with Fallout First. Uh, I believe it was last month's item. And I put it down in my camp and I thought to myself, hmm, self, you should put a house on the back of that thing. So I went through the trouble already of placing this down on a conduit. And then I sunk that down by one click uh, in a pressure plate. And that's just, that, that does two things for me. It gets the brontosaurus a little bit lower into the ground uh, to make sure none of it's floating. And it also allows me to disappear it later with a flame trap that I've also sunk into a floor item, uh, an Ooga Ooga Egg. And this gets the flame uh, at a level where it'll be able to burn that conduit. I did uh, sunk it into the pressure plate. Um, if you don't know how to sink stuff in a pressure plate, I will show that later, but um, I showed in most of my videos. You probably, if this isn't your first rodeo, know what that is already. Now I'm gonna be lining this up, but uh, to finish my sentence that I started five weeks ago, um, if we need for any reason to get rid of the Brontosaurus, if it's intersecting with stuff we're building on it, uh, deleting that conduit will make it go into the void rather than uh, rather than to be destroyed and turn yellow and still have a hitbox. It'll be gone. So uh, it was just a thought, uh, planning ahead, hoping against hope that it would work. So we're just lining things up, trying to get this and then you're gonna go up by um, a roof and a half also if you missed it I did just put out a video not too long ago of a um, character build video that's all bash damage and it's pretty fun and the reason why I mention it is it is a series and there will be uh, a, another video of its kind coming soon so that's something to look forward to anyway you're just gonna be trying to line this up until the roof piece is sitting directly on his little back. And now that we have that done, this is actually going to be the determining area for where the box part of the build is going to be. Um, but underneath that, we're going to start off with a platform of roofs that's offset by half foundation. Um, if what I'm saying doesn't really make sense, um, it'll all be clear as you watch this transpire. So, uh, just sit back, relax, uh, slap yourself in the face because of the... Well, don't do that. My therapist actually said not to do that. Um, but one thing you could do is not... Don't know. See, that's the problem. I started trying to think before I speak, and now I've got nothing to say and I'm trying to do this voice over here and that's making it a little difficult but anyway uh, to remove the roof that's holding those up you just change it to a slanted roof or something and it breaks that uh, desire that it has in its heart for support so then you can get rid of it now I'm just building these over here because we're gonna save this foundation over here I'm gonna make it a different colored one and uh, that's just as like a placeholder in case we need to re build or attach anything to that floor area we have this over here keeping that safe and sound but out of the way and uh so that's what i meant by offsetting it by half foundation and now when we build the structure which we're going to use the original thing we lined up first of all the structure will be centered over the dinosaur's center mass which is what we need and also uh, there's going to be a half a foundation worth of uh, floor in the front and back of the structure, which we're going to be using as kind of like a back deck and also in the front. That's where you're going to sit to drive Dino Boy around. Sometimes if you start lagging out, especially in free cam mode, uh, just leave uh, build mode and then go back into, uh, into it. And it does uh, seem to fix that issue. Uh, quite somewhat now using catwalks you're gonna snap over and down blah 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 you've been watching it happen um, and I didn't tell you what was going on because I believed in my heart that your sense of perception 
was able to deduce what was going on. So in that manner, I was respectful and I didn't assume bad things of you. I thought, you know, you are watching the video and able to perceive and understand what the things I'm doing are without me directly saying it. Okay, and uh, you don't really need to make them any specific wall type. We're going to be using the Palace of the Winding Path, but of course you can replace with any options you need. The front and back ones, though, I will recommend doing the Palace of the Winding Path uh, because this next part we're going to make a little uh, roof thing. And it's going to be lined up directly with the floor, um, but we're going to make it a little bit lower um than a normal roof is and that will also be evident once i do it just what the hell i'm talking about i think it'll all be made perfectly clear so to to do this uh simply we're just gonna snap the foundations over to where we want them and we're gonna go down about this far so in order to do that you're just gonna take this foundation and move it down that far uh, because everything's already lined up for us. That's why we keep these foundations cluttering up our lives. And it's because I don't really have a good sense of when it's time to throw something away. So that's why I'm speaking to you now from the bottom of this pile of rubbish that has become my actual life. Uh, that's right. It's a, it's a disgusting and despicable heap of shit. Um... Anyway, thanks so much for watching the video, guys. If you're enjoying the content, consider subscribing because I do post infrequently and uh, it's always some manic rant. So there's that. And also, if you like the video and like it with that little, see how that little thumb there and you click on it and that what that does is basically Jesus, uh, he's like, he comes back sooner first of all, which is a big W. And then he says, wow, I think more people should be watching your videos because Jimmy hit that thumbs up. So I'm going to show it to more people and then he'll get more views. So it's actually helping me out quite a bit. So I really do appreciate that, Jimmy. Thanks for the like. And uh, we're just going to snap over now. And because the Palace of the Winding Path doesn't have a beam down the middle when you burn it, we're able to just snap these through it. But when you do it, you're going to want to make sure the orientation is right so that when you flip them up, it's peaked in this direction. So uh, you're, you can see that when you start off and you, and you, and you change it, uh, you can see which direction it's going to flip up. So this one is fine. And then the other one, you just, you know, it's going to be 180 degrees of that. So then you uh, can do that. We're going to flip these up. And uh, the next step here is um, getting rid of these. Also, um, I'm overcomplicating this, obviously. I like doing that from time to time. Just, I don't want you to get like, oh, don't get rid of that. Keep it. Keep it, please. And we're going to keep this as a, a third foundation. I'm going to move this out of the way as well uh, because it's kind of ruining my vibes. Um, I have vibes sitting around that I don't like getting ruined. Uh, they kind of make me feel kind of poop. Um, so also make them all different colors uh, as each other so you can remember this is a this is an anchor point foundation. Anyway, um, now that we have this, I'm going to put a roof back exactly. Remember how we already had a roof right here? And I could have just done this then instead of now add another one again. Well, instead, let's add another one again because why do something... Uh, you know, the easy and quick and simple way when you can overly complicate it and make someone else's life worse in a tutorial video uh, showing them how to do it. You're just going to burn both of those. And then at this point, you can actually just store the roof and it'll store everything um, or just store them one by one. Again, try to maximize the amount of things that you do in your life um, instead of trying to be efficient. This will allow us to see you can actually snap these half walls in without burning the roof, surprisingly, if you just keep the roof down. Right. But we won't be able to put this second roof above it without them being burned. So that's why we burned it. In case you were wondering, I know you were probably sitting there. Why did he? Gosh, darn it. Why? Why on earth did he burn that? I just can't figure it out. Well, that's why. Um, so mystery solved there wow yet another humdinger 
And now we can use these Palace of the Winding Path uh, uh, slanty roof chunks, and they have this kind of cool awning look, uh, which is why we did everything that we just did, okay? So that's why we lowered it down, um, and also uh, now we can just turn these into, you know, not brick because that's kind of ruining the mojo we have going on here. I don't really want to put a bunch of bricks on the back of Barry the Brontosaurus when he's trying to carry me through the desert, okay? He's got a lot already on his plate. He doesn't actually have a plate. That's how bad things have gotten. Um, and I'm going to use these ranch house roofs. For one, they have a red color on the top, and we're going to be using a lot of, like, reds and stuff. And then um, it's also a clean surface on the bottom. So in, in both ways, things are good. Now, uh, this is the chunk structure that we've appeared uh, to have built. Uh, and see how it's just kind of levitating on his back? I would say that's not good. Because when I, you know, want to go for a ride on the back of a Brontosaurus, I don't want it to just be, like, balanced precariously on his uh, weird little uh, chunk of back. So, what we're going to do is make a little bit of a shape that kind of folds around his body, and it's going to also allow us to expand outward side to side so the structure on his back isn't just, like, tall and narrow. Uh, so, we just snapped over by one half using the original structure template, uh, the, the foundation we saved, um, for the structure location, and it snapped over by half, side to side, which means, and then we're just going to go up by one uh, full wall instead of a wall and a half, and that's going to get us with um, with a half wall below this structure. What I'm saying now makes literally no sense. The words are correct, but they're not very, um, they don't make sense. So, I'll just show you um, oh, that's not faced the right way. The Palace of the Winding Path pulling its fucking tricks again. Now we can snap this through here, and uh, again, you're going to want to make sure the snapping slant is in the right rotation, so that the slant will be like that, and then it will actually snap right through the dinosaur, and then turn this one 180 degrees so that it'll be snapping a slant in the other direction, and again, it'll snap right through it, um, and, but if, if it has, if you have any trouble with that, that would be a good time where you could destroy that conduit and the dinosaur would disappear completely and you wouldn't have any intersection problems for this. Very forgiving. And again, we're going to use that little, uh, Palace of the Winding Path slant. And now we kind of have, and I'm going to save this one as well. So it's a fourth foundation. Because uh, why not have 3,000 foundations here? But this is the, this is all. There's just going to be four foundations in your camp. So just try to remember which one is which. I already forgot, so I guess practice what you preach as well. Uh, that's something they also recommend. Um, but I don't listen to them. I'm the one saying it, that's why. Huh? So then we're going to use the green striped awning, uh, which I bought about five months now. I'm going to say probably a year now, probably two, a uh, year and a half. It was a long time ago. Never used them before. Um, why would I? What do I need them for? You know, but I needed to have them at the same time. And the green one kind of kind of matches. It's not quite the right color, but it's close enough. And now we're going to deal with the fact, you know, again, that it's kind of uh, uh, floating again on its back. The slanty things coming down do help quite a bit with the illusion that it's kind of levitating on the very the very uh, Quasimodo of his back. So we're going to be um, using conduits now and um, just staple him to the side of his body. He won't feel it. Um, he's actually quite tough. Um, and actually, now that I'm on the subject of plastic dinosaurs, I'm not really sure why they gave us any in the first place. The the green one, the the T-Rex the ones... They're very cartoonish looking, and they're like comical, like their arms are wrong, and, and their face, and, and, sh and shit. And they're very plastic looking, and, 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 and whatnot. The Brontosaurus, it is obviously plastic, um, and it does look plastic, but at least it, it doesn't look quite as cartoony in my opinion. And I probably wouldn't have thought to do something like this 
uh, using the other dinosaurs, even if it did somehow magically, you know, if, if it was possible to put a, a thing on his back, which it's not as much because of how he's standing. Uh, but this one seems just believable enough that I was able to have the idea and build it without feeling too sad. Um, this is kind of what I did with the, some of these. I, I started using these Nuka-Cola breast conduits um, because they're not quite as sticky outy, uh, surprisingly. And what I did was I just, I, I put them on this when it was a normal slant roof. And then when I changed it back to the Palace of the Windy Path, it like put it in that that gold chunk sticking up and that kind of helps hide some of the conduits because we want the wires mostly the conduits can pretty much eat shit for all I care um, so anytime that I get a chance to not have them be the focal point I'm gonna try to go for that you know what I mean um, but I think it just you can already see it adds a lot just helps give you that idea that it's kind of nailed down now for the sides I want these to be expanded floor space for such a small area. So I'm going to try to shove a barbed wire fence on there. And you can see that my right joystick does have some stick drift. So every time I turn left, you can see it turn uh, right, right again, right after I do that. I said the word right too many times in that sentence, but they didn't mean the same thing each time. And I think you can probably, you don't have to take as many points off because of that, but I do understand your point of view, and I know why you're getting angry, um, and it, that's not even, like, it wasn't my fault. If you want someone to not eat your mustard, then you shouldn't leave the cap off. That's something I've been saying for years. Now, you're going to take this uh, theater row seating, which I put up front, and for this one, I want to put the Ooga Ooga egg underneath it, and um, that is how it's pronounced, in case you were wondering. And uh, if you use FreeCam, make sure you go up into the sky as much as possible because they put R1 and R2 on the wrong sides uh, when you're trying to go up and down with it. Because you know how when you're like moving an item up and down with R1 and R2, it's the opposite of when you're in FreeCam going up and down with R2 and L2. And I know the buttons are not called that on Xbox, but it's probably going to be the same problem. And uh, that's probably something that they could take a look at if they ever uh, booted up their old consoles, blew the dust out of them. I should probably do that. I can actually hear it. Sounds like a jet fighter about to hit Mach speed. So that's probably a situation for future Mr. Church to deal with because that sounds like too much work. So let's just... That's a drop merge, by the way. You just pick up that little... Con uh, the pressure plate and then slap it down again and the button will push down and then you can pick stuff up and put it down it'll sink down the footage is you know already we saw it so this isn't helpful when i'm saying it now and that's don't worry i'll fix that when i edit it it's gonna line up perfectly and then i'm just gonna well i now have to change what i said now but that's i'll be able to let's okay now i put these fences around here and I, you can see that I changed them to the paddock fence. And that's mostly just because they're called paddock fence, which is a funny name because it reminds me of haddock, which is a kind of fish. But over here, I was having an issue because, uh, uh, first of all, overdrawn my bank account. And second, I couldn't figure out why that stupid fucking, uh, you know, barbed wire fence wasn't snapping in. And I thought, well, let's remove at least the the dinosaur from existence uh, and this that's something that happens anyway spoiler alert uh they are extinct and that's not my fault uh but in this situation you can see when you burn the conduit after 15 just 15 short tries um that will disappear the dinosaur there's no yellow ghost of him anymore and uh you can just store the generator and now we have this free area underneath the structure. Because, of course, the walls and the roofs are all self-supported. They don't sit on top of that um, dinosaur. Why would you think? they? Th well, they don't. Okay. So this, um, I then tried picking it up, the corner of it. You know, now it'll stick in. That's what she, no, and then it wouldn't still. And then I thought, well, the third try, and I want to point out, like, I know it looks like, oh, you could have just done this thing. 
I tried all of these steps individually, but only when I did all three of them did it let me put that little fence piece in, okay? So you can get off of my back about it, and that's something that I would prefer you did in a, you know, sooner rather than late. So over here, um, I wanted to put some posts holding up this back awning, and that's because I'm going to stick one of those, uh, those little mole rat generators on the top of it. Uh, which I will demonstrate in a couple of seconds as well. Um, so I just stacked these on top of each other and then sunk them down till they were about this height. Um, and I just kept sinking them down, sinking them down until they would fit underneath that awning. Because remember, the awning is slightly lower than it normally would be because of how we built it. Uh, so those posts have to be lowered. And then here's the generator, which I built on that roof while it was flat and then and then replaced it with a slant. So that's how it's in there so so f deep. And uh, this, um, well, you can just get rid of this. Um, but that molar at generator, I think, adds a lot of, like, a really good view. If you need to repair anything, by the way, over here, I recommend uh, using the repair all on your, con uh, your camp uh, module instead of doing this. I don't recommend anything that I just did. Anyway, uh, that's fine. I wanted to add that that generator because it adds some movement and it also adds a little bit. I like the metals in it and it kind of has kind of a steampunky vibe, not too much. We don't want to go too far in that direction, just a little bit. And then we are going to need a place to sleep in our little area, but I also want it to be kind of more of a living space than a bedroom. So the solution is I'm going to put the first sleeping bag uh, that comes from uh, Beasts of Burden event. And uh, now you can see uh, by sinking that down in, we can sleep on the couch. And that is called a couch and not whatever it's called in the game. Now, this isn't doesn't fit against the wall. Uh, and I was trying to, and as you can see, it won't snap because it's red. And uh, speaking of red, that was uh, the emotion I was feeling was rage and anger. And I don't feel that very often. Um, just probably like once every day. And so as an emotion, hard to deal with. But I realized it was probably, see this carpet is probably blocking it because you know how it's one inch off the ground. And so that's going to keep you from putting curtains up uh, in the game. So I thought, well, if we destroy the thing that's holding up that carpet, then it'll let me put the uh, thing against the wall. Obviously, we can't destroy carpets, and even if we could, the hitbox for it would still be there. I was like, well, this is a five-head strap because, you know, when we destroy that roof, you know, that's the support for the roof, so the roof will go into the void, much like the dinosaur did earlier. And then I realized um, I did get pretty far into doing this when I realized because I s flipped that roof up to burn it, the burned roof is now going to be in the fucking way instead of the burned, you know, whatever else is sitting on it. So now that I was like, whoa, wait, what the fuck? I saw it there and I was like, wait, I just realized that's stupid as hell. So then I got my sunken down burner, you know, which we had to burn the uh, dinosaur and burned it this way. And so now that's burned underneath. There's no issues and it's still red. It needs support, guys. Obviously it needs support, but it always says that. Um, and so this is the demonstration over here when I was figuring out, yes, it is indeed the carpet getting in the way. Um, and then the issue is if you remove the roof, you get that roof out of there. Well, what happens? You still can't put it in because they added about a year and a half ago the need for support underneath certain items like doors when you place them in. I don't know why they did this. It's uh, it's really ruined a lot of uh you know, it's it's more restrictive. We don't need more restrictions. So uh, what I realized is we need to make sure that the roof is still underneath the the curtain. So what that means is we need the carpet to be supported by the back roof so we can burn that roof, which will get rid of the carpet, which will then let us be able to still have the roof in the front, which will then be able to to let us build the, the curtain on the fucking wall because it's just a little because it's it's fine guys this is normal okay but i want to say something for real though uh this is an example of the horrific building restrictions in the game that a lot of them compile in a way that don't really seem to make any sense and many of us 
uh, have had years of figuring out how, you know, the, all the little nuances and stuff. But if I was like trying to get into this game and try to get into building, this would be a massive deterrent for me. And I would be very frustrated. And um, I was able to figure out what was going on because I've been building in the game for five years. But, you know, this is idiotic and you shouldn't have to do this. I shouldn't need to pull out a whiteboard and literally do astrophysics to put this fucking curtain on the wall. That's just my opinion, maybe, and maybe I'm overreacting. But I think, you know, you buy something from the fucking Atom Shop, maybe you should be able to fucking put it in your camp. And I know that maybe I'm in the minority with that thought. But, in my opinion, when you purchase an item, you should be able to use it. Of course, you know, I have been known to be a massive Karen, so, uh, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Yeah, and um, also pepper, because, well, do you guys even like pepper? Do you ever, like, think about pepper? Like, that's, like, one of the weirdest spices that there are. Because, like, other spices are, like, they taste good, and they have, like, an actual, like, flavor that's, like, kind of in the same genre, but pepper's out there just tasting like fuck. And you're like, why the hell does pepper... Like, it doesn't taste like anything. It's just, it tastes like a rock that's, like, kind of being a bitch. Like, it tastes like if a rock was a bitch. I don't really know how else to put it. And so, I don't know why we're even, like, it's not really that big a deal, but, like, why do we put that on our food when it tastes so fun? Like, why is that one of the core foods? Salt, pep, like, it's not a spice. Like, there's better spices if you want to go for, like, a spicy flavor than fucking pepper. You know, like we're this, we're not a, a fucking circus. We don't have to be clowns right now. So get that shit off the table. Like that, you have some, you have good spices that taste good. Um, you've got like stuff that tastes like, uh, you know, like a normal food. But like, what kinds of food actually you wa do you want them to taste like fucking pepper? None. So why do people then are like, you know, what we should have cracked pepper as a flavor for potato chip? You know what I mean? Like, it's getting out of hand. Did you really run out of ideas already? Get that shit out of here. Anyway, um, that's really important, and I'm glad that we got that sorted out. Um, and, of course, I just had to show fixing the cur uh, the rug after all that and fixing everything that we had to move so that we could put that fucking curtain in. And so, obviously, you can see why Pepper would be out, huh? Anyway, if you stack these up right here... You can have this cool little uh, kind of like a foot stand here for the guy that's driving and it will just float. These things are nice because they do float and, and I like it that some things do float. And now we're going to add something joyful. This is actually my favorite part of the build and um, I am not like I still have the same amount of hair uh, as when I started this process. Why do you ask? Um, so first I wanted to show that yes, I did build this stash box quickly thinking that it was um, this generator. Um, easy mistake to make, especially with my bloodshot eyes that have been staring at the screen for so many hours. But I think you guys can just take this time. Yes, laugh at him. He's a fool. Okay, glad we got that sorted out. Now, I'm going to remove this piece of fence because we're going to put a ladder here going down. And the ladder is going to be so fun to make. In fact, I'm actually stoked just watching the footage, remembering that feeling I had in the moment, that joy that was in my heart. It's hard to replicate it. So it's kind of like living vicariously through myself. Um, what you're going to want to do, though, if you're following the tutorial is, uh, you know, go, f you know, you want to probably watch through the whole thing before you build this yourself because you'll see that I do, there's a shortcut here where you don't have to like do every step I did. Because I, I did this, you know, stacking it up by a half wall. Thinking that, you know, I'm not going to want the ladder going all the way to the ground. Uh, but then not realizing that there's a big gap of space underneath where you have the ladder in the first place. Uh, so, you know, it, it can be expedited. It doesn't mean need to be like this. But yeah, obviously, I just blueprinted those things so I could stack them and they would be lined up perfectly. And then I built something on that chair. 
and then I realized that I get this stupid um, furniture entry blocked uh, issue. And I need to use something like the chair because the chair floats and that's one of those magical tools that we use. And there's only a few things in the in the building menu that float. The filing cabinet is one, but it's not wide enough as I showed. Because um, what we want to do is once we just like move this stuff out of the way, we want that whatever the conduits are on to stay floating there. Um, because we need to burn the thing that's holding up the conduits so that just the wires at the end of the ladder are hanging down. If what I just said makes no sense to you, don't worry. It'll be uh, shown in the video once I've achieved it. But I found this console. This is one of the other things that also magically floats. There's a few things that do it, and that's one of them. And uh, you're going to pick it up and place it down. That will make you be able to place the wires through anything you want. You're going to line up the uh, blueprints side to side in, in a way that will line up with those wires um, so that you can snap these to it. You're going to put these all the way up and down. And again, uh, this is about as far as you can do it. And then when you push this in, it'll snap through there. And you're able to uh, put it in all the way uh, because um, it's a special wire trick um, and then you can move this away and those little uh, conduit pieces will stay um, and then the nice thing about it is we're just gonna move this back a little bit it's obviously not uh, good it's not all the way just push it back a little bit just so those wires go through the conduits and then what happens is when we destroy the conduit um, the bottoms of the wires will hang down without chunks on the bottom. Um, and the reason why we need a floating thing is uh, we need to destroy... Whatever we do destroy that the conduits are sitting on, um, which I'll demonstrate, I need that to be just floating in the air so that we don't have a pile of shit underneath where the ladder is destroyed because anyone walking by can come up and fix it. And the, the easier it is for me to... Rep just destroy that one thing when they inevitably do fix it the easier my life will be so then you can just get rid of that stuff and that's not going to look like that obviously we're in build menu and it's bugged out so it's all black that's happening the whole time i was building i don't think that's supposed to be like that but as you can see when i removed all that stuff and i removed this stuff um and then i go out of build mode you can see that ladder hanging down um, i'm also going to repair this you can see the in context with a dinosaur being there um, and uh, let's go out of build mode, turn around and face the glory. And then you can see how comically small the ladder is uh, now that we're looking at it. But you see how those wires hang down and stop. Um, so what I did was I redid it, I rebuilt it, but this time I didn't build up by half a wall. I just, I just built it right, right on those foundations that we had as like a kind of guide to get us in the corner. So I just did exactly what I just did, only I used this. Now, I found out after I did it, that if I had line, if I had snapped these together like this, and then lined up the pile of um, blueprinted pieces, then I could have moved the conduit console out, uh, put the little uh, conduit chunks in there, and then snapped it right back, and it would have been perfectly lined up. I didn't use the snapping for my benefit. But it's something that you do if you can ever decipher what the fuck I just said. Because whenever I describe what I'm thinking, I feel like it doesn't work out so well. Uh, but it could be an easy way to do this if you use those consoles and, and use the, the fact that they snap together. You could easily line stuff up a lot easier than I did. But having it go down this far uh, makes the ladder twice as long. It looks way better. And it actually looks like you could use it if you were, you know trying to get into the dinosaur it's actually obviously not functional but uh we don't need it to function we just need it to look yummy so repair this it'll bring the dinosaur back and then when we go out of build mode we keep that broken see how those wires come down and then just stop that's a really special thing about um the broken things holding up so if we were just to break the conduits the wires would disappear you have to break the thing that's holding up the conduits so and then i got done and i thought well this is a really cool build i'm really liking how it's coming along but i'm gonna add a little place first of all i want this to be a functional camp because i want to actually be able to have it up and uh, so i want to have all the stuff that i use at my camp so 
um, all the, the benches and then my scrap box and my ammo box and now my cryo freezer because I have to have one in each camp and then it's kind of a dice roll and if it works or not. Um, but, you know, it, again, um, it's a product. Um, I didn't pay for this one. It was on the scoreboard. So luckily, I don't have to get as mad when it doesn't work. I just have to get like, I'm just, I think I'm going to get about like 28% as mad as usual. Um, but for things I buy in the item shop, then I'm going to get 150% mad. And that's going to make up the difference somewhat. Now, I'm doing this because I don't want the scrap box to be visible. Because they've only given us one butt-fucking skin for it. And that's just as bad as the original skin. It's terrible. It doesn't match any vibes for anything you ever make. Unless you're building something that's literally vault Tech themed. Uh, so... Uh, I don't want it to be visible, but if you have it just underneath the surface of the earth, you can still walk up to it and interact with it, and um, you don't have to look at it. If you interact with it, you will see the lid open up a little bit. And then I'm going to have a vendor over here. Um, this is a pressure plate that's depressed, um, and one thing that you want to do is just, if you know the pressure plate is depressed, um, just make sure you're being available for them. Uh, make sure that the pressure plate knows that you're still there and you're open to hearing and listening and everything like that. And you'll be there if it needs anything. But you also need to make sure you have boundaries because the pressure plate, you know, it, it puts a lot of pressure on your plate. This is the finished product and I'm really excited with how it turned out. Um, and I'm really, I feel that inspiration that I was missing for so long. And I know it's kind of goofy, but I think it also, it doesn't look too cartoony because a, like I was ranting earlier, this brontosaurus isn't as comical and cartoony as the other dinosaurs, which I think is why this works. But yeah, we have all the little things here. This story is kind of like, this is like a place where this wandering, uh, merchant trader guy stopped Maybe to sell some of his goods, maybe to refuel, uh, maybe to, when I say refuel, obviously, get water, um, get more hay for the Bronte to eat. Uh, maybe sell some of his goods on that little uh, uh, little dresser there while he's waiting. Um, I also hid my ammo box in the same manner that I hid the stash or the scrap box. So I do have everything I need there. But I love how tall this, the dinosaur is. It's very imposing. Like when you walk up to it, it really feels pretty cool. It, it, it was kind of, I was kind of going with like, um, kind of like Arabian vibes for it, like, uh, caravans. I was thinking of like camels in the desert and like, uh, you know, traveling, uh, merchants. And, um, I did actually play around with like the fortune teller, uh, outfit and stuff, but it wasn't really, um, it wasn't really working for me to be honest. Um, but yeah, we have some cool stuff over here and uh, the like all the stuff that you would like need for like your actual camp. And then over here, you've got the cool spot. And I did make sure um, when I was making it that anyone can get into the dinosaur if they want. You don't even need to have marsupial um, or a jetpack or anything like that. This character doesn't even have a jetpack. And uh, you just walk up the tail of it. And then if you can't jump up this this lip here... Uh, you can just interact with this violin here, um, which you might want to do anyway. I've got this little bird. I've got these barrels, which have like food and water in it because you're traveling a long time. You've got a curtain here. I would probably just keep it open because it does go in with that pipe. But I love how the pipe looks kind of bulging out of the wall, adding some detail, adding some kind of, like I said before, a little bit of a steampunky feeling, but not too much, not too much. You want to thread the needle there. This bunny is hiding the fact that that edge of that curtain is clipping through the couch because I needed to push it over so we had egress right here. Otherwise, I couldn't get through. Um, this, the reason why it's okay that this is blocking this door off is this is where all my stuff is that I'm selling, the trader. Uh, so you only need, think of it like a trunk. Like you don't need to get in and out of that a ton. You just, you need a, to be able to push stuff down in there, maybe pack it up. But then you're fine to just cover that up with your couch and you can, away you go, over the planes. Uh, this can be closed, obviously. Um, you can close everything up. Um, and it actually has this really nice cozy feeling when it's all closed up in here. Um, so like you could, I could even think about like sleeping in here and, um, 
I love a build that when I've made it, I can feel like I could be in that in real life, especially something as wacky as this idea. Like, it just feels like fun, you know? And then here's all the food for the Brontosaurus to eat on this side and a little, uh, maybe a little balcony. You obviously can't sit in either of those chairs. There's not enough space, uh, but it does uh, sell the idea. This is a giddy up faster button, kind of fucked up now that I think about it. Don't worry about that. And then, of course, we have the egg that we hid here. And then maybe some seats in case as you're traveling, you see someone that needs a lift. There's uh, the Beverly Hillbilly's grandmother's chair up on the top there. And then you have wood for the fire, which is, this is probably a gas stove now that I think, but don't worry about that. I think you're getting kind of like overwhelmed by it. But I was really happy with how this build turned out. And I hope you guys like it as much as I enjoyed building it. It's really exciting. It's really fun making like goofy stuff like this, but executing it well enough to be proud of at the end of the day, something that I can put, you know, a, a blue ribbon on my chest. Thank you so much to my patrons and channel members for your support. Your continued support has meant so much to me, especially as infrequently as I've been uploading. Uh, remember, I'm uh, uploading some new kinds of videos too, in addition to my camp build, so keep an eye out for that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful time in the desert with your Brontosaurus.